Now we will see the intraparenchymal indirect signs. Why the indirect signs are important? Because the direct signs are time consuming, they are tedious and they are extremely operator dependent. So which are these indirect signs? The acceleration time, acceleration index, acceleration, early systolic peak, overall waveform shape and resistive index difference between the two kidneys. Uh, the normal values, the abnormal interpretation, all that we will see in our second part that will be the renal artery stenosis and its findings on the color Doppler. Right now we will concentrate on getting the good pulse Doppler examination, getting a good spectrum for the evaluation and the interpretation of indirect signs and how to do that. So how to adjust your color presets? So whenever you start the interrogation of the intraparenchymal branches, you should reduce your PRF and so to such an extent that the artery starts aliasing. The artery and veins, the, both the flow starts aliasing. And then you should step it up by one or two steps. Your PRF comes here. It will be different in different machines. But you will now start seeing that it is no longer aliasing. And this is where you should do your interrogation very well. Of course, you can put your pulse Doppler at these different sites at the different levels so which is going to be the best one if you will see here uh, in position a just the small portion of the artery is seen and you will not be able to get a very good pulse doppler spectrum here if you place your spectrum on c and b position then also you are not really I insulating the good amount of the blood flowing through these intraparenchymal branches. So the position D and E is the best where you should be able to get the maximum recording from this blood flowing through these arteries and your spectrum will be crisp and will be interpretable. So in D the sample gate is well positioned and it is parallel to the vessels. In E also, it is well positioned. The sample gate is widened. This helps in obese patients and those with diffuse parenchymal and small vessel disease where you tend to get little less blood flowing through the intraparenchymal branches. The patients who have diffuse parenchymal disease and then in those patients, if you increase your gate width, you will get a better spectrum. So this is where you will put your spectrum. This is a good position to get a mid-region spectrum. But if you want to get a good spectrum at the lower pole, then you need to angulate your probe position so that you will start getting the lower pole arteries in the longitudinal section in its entire length. And then you will get the lower pole arteries better. Similarly, if you want to get the upper pole arteries, you should angulate your probe in such a way that you start scanning the upper pole at some angle and the vessels which are seen are seen as a complete longitudinal section at the upper pole. Then you should insulate these arteries. So whenever you take a good intraparenchymal spectrum, what measurements you take is the peak systolic velocity, the end diastolic velocity, the RI which is important and the acceleration time. The acceleration time automatically gets calculated if you press the auto calculation, auto tracing function but one should remember how you get the acceleration time is the start of the systole when the spectrum starts rising when it starts going up to its peak and that should be taken as the first peak and not as the second peak as you can see here which is circle is put over here and that is the first peak systolic peak that is the early systolic peak and that's why your acceleration time is measured here like this so now how to interpret, how to get a good spectrum. If you look at this spectrum, the PRF of this is very high. As you can see, the velocities till 120 are seen here and the scale is not very good because you are getting a very stunted spectrum. So you will not be able to really interpret your spectrum very well. If you want to calculate the acceleration time, you will not be able to get it very well. So what you should do is you should reduce the PRF. Now you've made it to 45 velocity. Your PRF is low. 
and that's why now this spectrum is much more interpretable and you can make out the early systolic peak very well and you will not mistake the second peak and take your excitation time till the second peak one has to look at the early systolic peak that is the esp the another thing what you can do is you can you know reduce the velocity and you can widen the spectrum then also that will help you to get the early systolic peak very well these are the parameters so this is the physics involved behind it and in the machines the application specialist can make these adjustments for you so this is where you have reduced the window of your color picture and you have increased the window of your spectrum which is 40 60 40 the image is occupied 40 percent by the color and 60 percent by your spectrum and that's why it becomes more interpretable so these are certain tips which can help you in making your spectrum more interpretable and then once you make that more interpretable your interpretation becomes easy of course the power doppler helps you in telling you that the interparenchymal flow is normal and reaching up to the periphery so always we put the power doppler and just show or a color doppler to show that the flow is reaching up to the periphery we insulate the flow at the upper pole in the mid region and at the lower pole ri is the important parameter we of course measure psv and edv how does it help you in segmental artery involvement and to look for the accessory renal arteries if your spectrum if your psv is 50 60 centimeters per second at the mid region and lower pole but you will see the psv suddenly rising to say uh, 100 and 150 centimeters at the upper pole then you know that there may be in the segmental arteries which are involved or if the spectrum or the ri is totally different from the other two readings and at the upper pole the ri is coming very low then you must suspect if there is any accessory renal artery and that has been stenosed and that's why you're getting this kind of a spectrum so it helps you indirectly in coming to the conclusion and of course the acceleration time has to be mentioned in the report uh, the interpretation of that that how what are the normal findings and what are the abnormal findings we will take in our later lecture but these are the tips practical tips to help you do a good renal doppler and take the interpretable uh, spectrum from the interparenchymal branches.